Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And welcome back, everybody. Yeah, life is full of challenges. There's ups, there's downs. And when you have those challenges, how do you bounce back? How do you find the strength? How do you find the resilience to bounce back? We're going to talk with somebody today that has some insight on that. We all go through stuff from time to time. She's a certified life coach and Clarity Catalyst instructor and learned a lot so far, even in, in speaking with her so in the last couple of weeks. And she's back with us. Gata Elias joins us here on the program. How are you doing today? I'm good. Yep. I'm good. I'm having one of these days. We all have like, them. <laughs> and yes. I'm not taking anything away from you. It's, yeah. you know, we, we, yeah. we have them. They, they come up, you know. They, ha- they happen. They happen. Yeah. And, you know, one minute you could be feeling, hey, things are good. Things are moving along in a positive direction. All of a sudden you get a phone call, something's up. And then that kind of changes things at that time. Um, How do you get through? Like when something comes up and and (sighs) it's a, you know, in the face of scorn, how do you move past that? Well, I can, I mean, I'll tell you what I did today. So I woke up, I'm just, I'm not okay. I don't know what it is, okay? And it, usually when that happens, I kind of go through the day and it gets worse and worse. But today I did something. So I thought to myself, okay, what was it? Like nothing happened. What, what triggered these emotions in me? Then I noticed that I got up from three, I was up from three to five. My sleeping pattern changed. I was disrupted. It was disrupted. That's the word, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that changed my mood. And and so, okay, so now I know what triggered it. And I am trying to, okay, what can I do to make my day better? And a lot of times, think when things happen during the day, it just, we have to figure out, okay, what is it? What triggered it? And is it that important? And what can we do to make it better? A lot of times it's just questioning things in ourselves to bring our mood from going into the anxious part to bring it down to where we are leveled. It takes a lot of self-awareness. Sure. And even in in your situation of your sleep being disrupted, it's like a car driving along. And if the car doesn't have a lot of gas, eventually it's going to stop. Or if it's not good gas, you know, this engine's going to, you know, be it, it's going to knock a little bit. You're running on low fuel because you didn't have a full night of sleep. And, you know, then you have thoughts going around. Um, Do you think it's impactful when we have those situations to write them down? So you have, you see it in front of you, the clarity, because maybe it's not exactly what you think. I don't mean you just, you know, I'm just in general, maybe it's not what we think it is, or maybe it's not as, severe as we think it may be and if we write it down we see it in front of us because yeah, our mind just exaggerates things usually that's what happens in our mind it's just something small but the more you think about it the the worse it gets so when you write it down you kind of you it's not simplifying we're not degrading what we're feeling it's just we're seeing it in front of us this is it's this big it's not this big. It's not huge. It's right. this big. So the more we write, the, the better. It And we let it out. Letting it out is so important. Yeah. I was talking to someone yesterday, and we we're talking about, uh, like, as, as parents, what do we do when we're anxious, when we're like, that's it, we're stressed? And I said, scream. Like, kids can tantrum. We can't. So once in a while, just if you're... If you don't want to lash out or snap, just take a minute, go somewhere and just scream. I do it. (laughs) But I tell people, uh, uh, close your ears. I'm going to scream because I need to like, or I'm going to blow up. So Mm -hmm. I scream. Mm -hmm. I scream. Somebody told me the other day, you know, uh, just in general, um, it was an energy healer that I spoke with. And she looked at my energy. I believe in it. I believe we all, 
have energy and uh, sometimes it can get wonky due to situations. And uh, that was one of her suggestions that, yeah, just let it out. You got to. Yeah. Gotcha. It's, it's like a good cry. Sometimes yes. you need to do that. And there are chemicals that are released within our tears that can be beneficial just to get it out. Yes. Um, but sometimes it just, you know, I also, I call it the emotional backpack. You, you keep putting stuff back there. You don't deal with it. And then all of a sudden something comes up. So you put one more thing back there and now all of a sudden it's so heavy that you're leaning back and <laughs> you fall backwards. You have it's take, true. You have to take some of the stuff out. Yeah. yeah it's mm. true. So screaming is one thing, right? And I mean, journaling is very powerful. Yeah. But I like when I journal in my in my daily journal to journal the positive, the journal inspirations, the just write uh, funny things. So when I go back and read my journal, it's uplifting. If it's something negative, I put it down, I read it, I go over it, I decide on it. And then when it's done, I feel garbage belongs in the trash can. Interesting I you're take, saying this. I take that paper. And I rip it and I put it in a trash can because it's it's just garbage that's inside of us that we need to let out. But I don't want to hold on to it in my journal. Hmm. I didn't I didn't realize this until you just said it. But when I think about and I started journal, journaling like two months ago, mm -hmm. almost every day I try to at least paragraph, maybe two. I would have to say it's seventy percent negative. Now I don't know if that's a bad thing, but I find mm -hmm. that it's just. I'm getting, you know, I'm purging it out, you know. Hmm. But do you want to go back and read the negative? That's the question you want to ask yourself. So when I go back to read my journals, I enjoy all the reading, all my, all my readings. It lifts me up. So it may be impactful I, I to, to put a positive spin on it. Yes, it's a negative situation, but I'm looking at the positive. Spin it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Spin it. You can. And I don't mean that being... I'm not true to yourself, but there is, you know, what's the lesson do you learn from, from whatever's going yes, on? Yes. Yes, exactly. So when I started journaling, it was very hard for me to journal. I didn't, I don't know what to write. So I, I decided to write as in I'm writing to myself. So I would start dear God. Uh, and then I would list like what happened today and why this has happened and what can you do to make it better? So Yes, just you turn everything into uplifting, positive, um, something that you go back and you read and it makes you feel better. Mm. Yeah. And even if it's, you know, negative with, you know, maybe a positive outlook, yeah. you see your progression. Exactly. And how you're so. moving it forward. Yeah. I do the pros and so. the cons. When I'm faced with a situation, I, I, I write the... This is the positive. This is the negative, And I weigh it all out. And when I have it in front of me, it really is impactful you know, to see it in, in, this, in your face. Yeah. It, it's, it goes back to the way our brain works. And, and it's, our brain is so used to just making everything into a negative. Yeah. But when we write it down, we're focusing on the difference between the pros and cons. That's basically it. So it's good. It's a good uh, habit for all of us to, to do. Do you think that we, we focus on the negative because we're, we're wired that way? And, and the negative is the you know, best way to describe this, the worst case scenario. I hate the way that sounds, but it, our, we look at it, our subconscious looks at it as worst case scenario to protect us. And so we're not disappointed. Or not harmed. Or hurt. Yeah, we're not hurt. I mean, we have to be aware of danger. We have to be aware of all these things. Yes. Sure. But it is, it's so much easier to think of the negative than to think of the positive. Because there's a lot of negative things. There's being lazy. There's procrastination. There's um, uh, self-sabotaging. There's so many. But then there's only wisdom. Kind of like there's happiness, there's wisdom, there's all these things. Yes. But it's so much easier. We're so used to thinking negative. Yeah. It takes an effort to be positive. It takes an effort to be happy. It takes an effort to do all these things. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's so true. It's yeah. true, yes. And what we do today, the way we live today, we a lot of us, we choose it to be because it's easy living. doesn't matter what it is. But then in the long run, it, it turns into a consequence. And I'll give you an example. Sure. Okay? Because I think I'm, I, it doesn't, it, it's kind of complicated. Um, I want to exercise, but I'm lazy. I can relate. <laughs> it's, it's, it's easier for me to just sit here and make up a hundred excuses why I'm not going to get up and exercise or go to the gym. This is my satisfaction right now but the consequence is that i'm gonna as i grow older i won't have good muscles i won't have good bones i'll be more prone to like a lot of physical injuries if i don't do weightlifting if i don't exercise i'll gain weight you know and and the same thing with raising kids we don't want to deal with things right now because it's easier, but then in the long run, it leads us to places where we don't want to be with mm-hmm. our kids. It's the same, it's for everything in life. Do you do you think it's the mindset where you flip that around, like the gym? Okay, I went today. Um, did I go? I went yesterday, and I flip it into instead of and yes, been there a million times. Where it's like, oh, I want to. I don't really want to go. I know I should. Now I'm looking at it in, in a more positive way where I'm doing something for myself. I c- it could be anything, but I'm I'm taking time for myself to feel better about myself. It's the same thing with giving blood, okay? Used to be dreadfully afraid of needles. Like I would put off the appointment for just a, a, a basic, you know, yearly blood test. I would put it off. It would come up. I'm like, yeah, let me just have another couple of days. I'm like, because I had a fear. And there was a couple of reasons why, you know, but not important. I flipped that around to, oh, I'm going to get information. Maybe it's not going to be the best info, but I can do something about it. Or, hey, it'll be, a, you know, fantastic. No issues whatsoever. But I'm doing something for myself. This is only in the past year or so. Now, okay. I have, I don't even think of, you know, I just go in, have a conversation with the phlebotomist. How's it going? Da, 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 da. Here's my arm. I, 20 seconds, we're done. And that's it. Game over, finished. And I would worry months for <laughs> those 20 seconds. But when you flip the mindset around, and it's habitual, you have to you have to work at it. It, it does make a difference. That's what I find. What do you think? Yeah, uh, and, and I'm the same way. I mean, I can do anything, but don't tell me to go get a blood work. I am terrified of needles. I sit there and I actually cry. Believe it or not, I do cry. (laughs) And I postpone and I postpone until I have to do it. I don't have a choice. Yes. But now I don't even think about it. I get up and I say, okay, you have to do this. It's not a big deal. Okay. Just um, close your eyes and I go and do it. Mm -hmm. It's a mindset. It is. Everything is a mindset. Everything is the way we think of it in our brain. It's how we uh, visualize it. Yeah. 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 We have a choice. That's the thing. We have a choice to control what's in our mind. The, The thing is we don't control it. We let it control us. How do you flip it around? Let's say just got a phone call. Woof. Wasn't expecting that. Mm. What am I going to do now? How do you take that info and try to immediately change it? Depends. What's the situation? So, uh, think of an example, a specific example. Um, is it, it, some things are tragic. And, and tragedy is tragedy. There's nothing we can do about it. We just have to go through the emotions. If it's someone that I am inviting someone over or we're going somewhere and someone cancels on me the last minute, okay, I can just sit there and um, get myself all worked up and all upset about it, okay? Or I can say, okay, they canceled. What else? I I can be home. I can watch TV. I can turn this thing into my time. 
Yeah. You know, it's, it's what can you do other than what it is that was supposed to be happening or whatever it is situation. There's always another side to it. But for you to be able to find that other side, you've got to breathe, calm down and, and say to yourself, okay, not the end of the world. What can I do? Always ask yourself that question, not to let those upset emotions take over. Because once you let them take over, you can't think. Mm. You're not seeing the positive side. And a lot of us live in that circle of negativity. Everything is negative. Yeah. Yeah. It's, we're conditioned from kids. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I firmly believe from the, the, the moment you're a child, you, you deal with negativity. You can oh, yeah. be two years old. You just started walking. Whoa, wonderful time. Look at everything's new. You come up to the kitchen table. There's a salt shaker and a pepper shaker. And you're like, oh, <laughs> look at that. Look at those two things. What, what am I going to do with that? This is fun. It's a whole new toy. Wow, new. What's the first thing you hear? Mom or dad? Don't oh, oh, touch. Oh, oh. Don't yeah. touch. Thank don't you. touch. Yeah. Put that down. Put don't, that down. Don't, don't, don't. Yeah. And, and now, it. you know, it's it's almost like a sledgehammer. <laughs> Hit you in the head. A ne- negative sledgehammer. <laughs> There's that one. Then there's another, you know, you come up to a street, you're with mom and dad, but blah, 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 don't be careful before but, you cross. Blah, blah, blah. <sighs> another that's negative. That's it. And that just keeps stacking up. Yeah. And then we think in a, in a negative way. I I heard, I don't know if I shared this with you, but I've used this um, in situations and it's actually made a difference. And I was in a challenging situation a couple of months ago, driving. Uh, worried about the weather. There was like a raging storm and I still had to drive. Uh, had some other stuff going on as well. And I just kept repeating these, these three things and I, it refocused me. I am not my thoughts. I am not my emotions. I am safe in this moment. Yes. Just keep, I kept saying, them. I'm like, just, it's going to be all right here. It's going to be all right. Yeah. It's, it's what you tell yourself. Right. It is so true. It is what you tell yourself. Yeah. I had kind of the same situation. Um, I don't remember what I was going through and it was, it was getting to me. And so, and I can feel my anxiety and I can feel that that's it. Like I am really going down a hill at this point. I started telling myself what was, um, you're going to do good. You're going to be okay. And you are going to to, to be like, you have, no, no. I said to myself, you have a lot of good things in your life. You have a lot of good things in your life. I think I said it like at least 20 times to myself. And that changed my mood for that day. Mm. That I, shifted yeah. the whole day around. It's what we tell ourselves every single day. You say negative, you're going to feel all the negative. Even if it's not true, it doesn't matter. Say the positive to yourself. If, even if it's not true, it's going to make you feel good. It will change your mood for that day. Mm-hmm. And I believe it's a process. And I'd love your, your <laughs> feedback on this, that yes, these things can help. But yeah. if you've been doing the work along the way, it's easier. What do I mean by that? If you've gotten to the point where you know yourself better, mm-hmm. You have faith in yourself. You have faith in the universe. You have some resilience. You know, you're at the point where I got through that. I get through this. And then the next thing that comes up, if you've gotten to that point of just doing the work, it's easier to bounce back. 100%. 100%. It doesn't mean you're not going to have bad days. It doesn't mean you're not going to struggle. Sure. It just means instead of taking you a week to bounce back, it could take you a day to bounce back. Or maybe an hour to bounce back. It's less time bouncing back because you have the tools and you know how to navigate your emotions and what to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And it's it's a lot of work. It's it's a lot of self work. Self care. Yeah. yeah. I had a situation last week where I found out something, a slight legal situation. I am com- and I'm not just saying this. I am completely in the right about this situation. And I just, I am, I have, here's the printouts, here's the everything right here. But to see my integrity challenged over something, at first I was like, what? Well, that could have lasted for days. 
if it was the old me, the new me, yeah, it was maybe 20 minutes. And then I was like, no problem. I will take care of all my documents and everything I have. And I will, you know, walk to where I need to go on said date and say, here you go. Here you go. With a smile. <laughs> you know, now make it right. And that's it. That's it. It's, I'm not even worried. I'm actually looking forward to going because I don't want to say, you know, I know I'm right, but I am. <laughs> I feel confident. It's more of a hassle that I need to take the time and do something. Yeah. Um, but then, you know what? That's the way it is. Can't change it. So yeah, get it done. To get to where you are, you had to make that choice to want to change. Yes. To want to better these things. Yes. Right? But it I, doesn't just... You're, you're right. You're 100 million percent right. But that came from a situation where I was forced to. A life changer. So a lot of times, that's sometimes what it takes. You know, I call it the rock in the pond. And then the, yeah. ri the ripples come out. Sometimes it, it happens that way where it's like, oh, it's a wake-up call. Hmm, okay. Um but it's, it's, again, it's, it's that journey. It's, it's a journey. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And we all have that wake up call. I think my journey, I didn't choose it. It just happened to me with my kids and it got me to where I am today. But then I did make the choices of, yes, I want to change. I want to learn all these things. I want to better myself and I want to better my life. And that made me a better mom for my kids. Mm. Yeah. But yeah. I'm better with myself also. Well, I mean, doesn't that go That's, back to what they say? You got to be good with yourself be, and, yeah. and, and love yourself before you can properly do it for others. Yeah. Yeah, and, very and true. No, it's a cliche, but until you get to that point, you don't know until you know. And once I realized that I'm at that point, it's like, oh, oh, that's that's why that feels that way. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, we'll get through this. We, yeah. you know, it's. It's another day. It's, it's another, another day. day. Yeah. <laughs> Just it's a I don't I'm a realist, so I don't want to say, you know, look on the bright side, put the rose colored glasses on, everything's been okay. But it, it it everything another cliche my mom always used to say, everything will work out. It does. Well you have to it does, but you have to work at it to work out. Yes, you do. You cannot yeah. just sit there and say no. it's gonna work. No, no, it doesn't. Life doesn't happen that way. No. You've gotta work at things. Absolutely. You've gotta yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and it, I'm sorry. Go go ahead. Ahead. No, you go. No, go ahead. <laughs> it's, okay. it's the faith. It's having the it's, faith in yourself or whatever yes. you want to put your faith into. Um, yes. And the resilience that, yeah, I got this. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, right? Yeah. Uh, one, one thing maybe we, we should um, discuss one day, um, the connection between faith and trust. You can have faith, but it's so hard to let go and trust. Ooh. Uh, I have uh, learned that the hard way. Me too. Yes. Me it, too. It takes a lot, especially if you're a strong person and you know you can do things and you have faith and you're living by your faith. And But to, to take a step back and say, okay, I trust. I am doing the work. It's not looking like it's going to happen, but I do have the trust that it will happen. That is very, very hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right there with you. And I've, I've, my, my new mantra over these you know, past couple of years is love everyone, trust few, do the right thing for all. And you could just say, just do the right thing, but you could be doing the right thing for yourself. And that's, you know, that's self-serving, yeah. whatever, whatever the, yeah. the right thing. The for right all. thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, say trust it again. Trust all. Love, love uh, no, all. No, love all. Yeah, trust okay. few. Yes, because you it, absolutely. Yes, I do agree with that. That's, it seems like that's where we both went wrong. So now trust <laughs> few. Trust <laughs> very few. <laughs> and very always few. do the right thing for all. The right thing, it depends on what is right, what your um, understanding of right. Yes. Yes. So, I, and I, I yeah, um, to me, the right thing is really. Uh, being kind, respectful, you mean those values that we all humans should have in life. Completely agree. And yes. the I think we just opened the door for a new topic. And next time we get yes. together, we, we hit that but, up. But can I share something? I just sure. want to share um, uh, uh, not an advice. It's just now that the holidays are coming and 
I, I'm very big on acts of kindness. So mm. this is something that I did. Uh, you know, when we're driving, we see people standing at the light with signs, homeless and all this. And I don't know if they're homeless or not. I don't yes. know if they need the money or not. I know some of them are homeless. But if you, if each one of us would have like $5 gift card, Dunkin' Donuts, and just hand them the $5 gift card, Dunkin' Donuts, for them to have a cup of coffee or tea in this cold. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's something that's an act of kindness for the, and I'm going to, in this holiday. One layer deeper, because, uh, yes. you know, trust few. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Trust few. Yes. How do you know that, you know, they're, you don't know. You don't know. I, you don't know. I go with my gut. And I had that situation at a yes. convenience store and gave somebody, I don't know, maybe $10. And my daughter's like, what are you doing? They're just, how do you know? And I said, I don't know what it is, but something inside of me said yes. that they needed it and they'll put it to good use in terms of what yes. they're going to buy. Um, I just went, I piloted by my intuition. But there are other times where, you know, like you said in the corner, <clears throat> excuse me, there's that person again. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. This this doesn't smell right. It does. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. follow your intuition. And at the end, you know what? You're doing what is what's a human we're yeah. doing yes so whether it's someone in need or not yeah. we don't know but to be prepared and i love that idea oh, yeah. i want you gift cards um just give yeah God, so, how, what's the best way to find you if somebody uh is going through some challenges or, or just needs what's more learn more about what you do especially as a uh clarity catalyst instructor and uh, and coach what do they do so yeah, visit my website, uh, saveryourseasons.com. You can email me, gada at sa- saveryourseasons.com. Um, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn. Y- you can find me anywhere. You and, Google me, you'll find me. <laughs> and and you're real. I am very real. real. Yeah. I mean, we came today here with, you know, talking about some challenges you happened today and that's what uh, spawned this topic of how to get through those. Um, And I appreciate your transparency. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thanks. We'll catch up soon. Feeling stuck or overwhelmed? Unlock your full potential with Gata Corey, founder of Life Coaching and Mindfulness. Transform your life and take the first step toward a brighter future today. Call 484-515-7908 or visit SaverYourSeasons.com to learn more. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. What about those round trips that you plan in advance, which are perfect on your way there and perfect on your way back? Or those meetings with friends for which you make a group chat three months before so that nobody or anything is missing? Or your daughter's first birthday party? You planned it with such dedication that instead of the first, it felt like our quince's. The same way you plan each detail for those moments. Start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts. Prepare an emergency kit. And make a family communications plan. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. Get started at ready.gov plan. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. 